Hi, and welcome to Something to Talk About. I'm Linda McNamee, and for the next hour, we're going to kind of catch up, because about a year ago, we talked about Art for Burlington, and now that it's been a year, we want to see what's going on. But before I begin, I want to remind you of a few important little housekeeping rules, tasks. We are not live this evening. We are home celebrating a wonderful Thanksgiving with our families. So you cannot call, but you can always email me at talk at bcattv.org. If you have a suggestion for a future topic, starting to get ready, getting ready for some new guests, fill in that schedule. We have our crew this evening who have given up their evening to come and hang out at BCAT. Chris Flaherty, staff member, making sure that everything runs smoothly and make sure us volunteers don't get into too much trouble. We also have Jolie Atwood and Liz Gillespie. Thank you, ladies, for giving up your evening, um, where you I'm sure you'd much rather be home, you know, reading War and Peace or something. But anyway, uh, thank you very much for joining us. And last but definitely not least, I want to thank my husband, Paul, for staying home for Daddy Date Night. Although Wednesday evenings are lo no longer Daddy Date Night, it's let's go have a hip-hop class. So anyway. Thank you, everyone, for giving up your evening. And now I would like to introduce my wonderful guest for this evening, who may look a little familiar to you, Jonathan Sax. 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 Yeah. Okay. Also known as John. Yes. And thank you for coming. You're very welcome. Glad to be here. So, and I was looking through my notes. I think I mentioned this to you um, right before we we started recording that it's been just about a year since. Mm. You last came on and shared the news about, hey, Burlington should have a sculpture park. Right. So thank you for coming back. I can't wait to hear all the, the, the updates. But yes. before we begin, can mm. you give our audience that may not have seen you earlier a little background on yourself, how you came to the Burlington area, and why you decided to get into public art? Well, um, I'd actually lived... I guess you'd call it the city. I lived in Brookline in an apartment for many, many years. Oh, wow. Because I had, uh, my company was in downtown Boston. Mm -hmm. And commuting, those of you who commute, I'm sure can... Uh, Been there, done that. that. Do not need to do that again. Commuting <laughs> is not fun. So I could take um, public transit or oh, whatever. Okay. Or at least if I did drive, I, could, I had many choices. So okay. that was all great. Mm -hmm. So my faithful dog, Walter, got really old. Oh. And Walter couldn't walk in, up and down three flights of stairs anymore. Yeah. So I feel Walter's pain. I was now at that point working at home. My business had become just me as a freelance doing websites and oh, photography. Okay. And I thought, hmm, um, I don't have to live in the city anymore. And Walter sure. didn't like it either. Uh, so I started looking around. And uh, as, again, I'm sure the Burlington residents know Burlington has, uh, Burlington is affordable. And if you do need to go to Boston outside of rush hour, I can be <laughs> at, let's say, MIT for an appointment in about half an hour, including parking, which is pretty good. Pretty good, yeah. Uh, I looked at further away places like way out in Groton, and it, mm. it, that's not, no, no good. So um, the affordability factor is great and, and the accessibility um, is is also really nice too. yeah and um in 23 years in brookline i never considered getting involved in town politics <laughs> never even imagined probably it. a smart move <laughs> well one of the things is um may, i don't know if this is typical but when you own a condo in a building an apartment building you somehow as you don't feel like a full property owner Okay. Well, you share. You are, but you don't. I think that, just as in Brookline, most of the people in town politics here, town meeting members, most of them okay. are homeowners not living in a multifamily home. Oh, okay. There's a tendency to feel like, well, if I live in this condo complex, I kind of live there. I kind of really live in town. There mm -hmm. are some, particularly people who used to own homes and now have moved to an apartment, who have been heavily involved in town affairs. Okay. But anyway, I was incredibly fortunate. I moved to a street in uh, Burlington called Oxbow Lane, 
Nobody knows why it's called Oxbow Lane. And I have the most wonderful neighbors. One of my neighbors across the street uh, plays banjo, and we get together oh, fun. once a week with him and other neighbors and play music. What do you play? I play guitar and recently auto harp. Oh, cool. At some point, you'll have to check in with uh, Burlington resident Kathy Beyer, who knows more about the auto harp than I'll wager anybody else in Burlington. Okay. She converted my clunky old one to a beautiful old harp. It's, wow. it's really quite wonderful. Uh, and my other next door neighbor uh, was Jack Kelly, who at that time was uh, head of the planning department. And he said, why don't you run for, why don't you run for, uh, if you got to know me a little bit, decided I was wacky, but not that <laughs> wacky. He said, why don't you run for town meeting? So I thought, yeah, why not? Why Find not? out what Burlington is about. And... Um, Again, as people probably know, in general, getting elected to town meeting is not a huge achievement. There are a few districts uh, that don't even that struggle to find enough members. Mm. Okay. Uh, anyway, so I I'm in uh, precinct seven. Okay. Went door it's to door. It's a fairly new precinct, isn't it? Didn't we just? I get guess a new it's the precinct that's inside 95, and people have explained <sighs> to me, oh, okay. I'm sorry, you're wrong. Inside 95, that's Woburn, that's not Burlington. And I say, well, that's interesting that you think that because I pay my real estate taxes and all my neighbors. <laughs> now, it is true that I'm almost a Frisbee throw away from the Woburn line. Okay. I mean, it's really close to Woburn, but it is definitely well, our Burlington. Well, pro my property line's Bill Ricca, so, you know, I, yes. I can relate. Yeah, it's definitely Burlington. Um, after serving on uh, town meeting and being uh, an occasional loudmouth, um, particularly in, in defense of open space, and I've been very involved in Mary Cummings Park, one of the reasons I chose the house that I did was that it was walking distance from a really nice piece of conservation land, mm. the mountain area, conservation area, which is right off of Mountain Road, which is oh. literally five minutes from my house. Okay. Then I discovered Mary Cummings Park. Which is 200 some odd acres, and that's another whole story. And basically, uh, spent most of my weekends for the past maybe eight years up there, either enjoying it or clearing trails and doing that. So that wow. We could do another whole show on Mary Cummings Park. <laughs> but Mary Cummings Park soon will be taken over. Uh, the management is being taken over by the trustees of reservations, which okay. is a good thing. It means I'm out of a job. Because they will take care of the park instead of me and a few other people from the Friends of Mary Comes Park. Oh, okay. uh, then came along the project for Burlington of having a master plan steering committee. I remember that. Every town is required to do it every 10 years. Okay. The state requires it. And uh, again, it was Jack Kelly who asked me if I wanted to serve as a town meeting member. And I said, sure. Okay. And for oh, about three years, we met once or twice a month uh, at the uh, basement of uh, Town Hall Annex and discussed every issue of significance for the town. Traffic, schools, like Cambridge Street, is housing. it one lane or two? Yeah, that, That's yeah. Not even, that could be a whole show. <laughs> that could definitely be a whole show. And even whether Burlington should take control of 3A from the state is another subject for a whole oh, show. Didn't know we could do that, but yeah, okay, let's... Yeah, a surprise to me. So okay. let's go back over to the... Yeah. So one of the things that kept coming up in steering was that one of the issues with Burlington is that every other town around here, Woburn, mm -hmm. um, Stoneham, certainly Lexington, Concord, um, Wakefield, they all have that 1890s downtown with the one or two three-story beautiful brick buildings from the 1890s so you can just picture you can picture the center of Woburn yeah and you can certainly picture Stoneham Center they got the theater uh, Wakefield they've got the lake I mean every town has a beautiful old downtown center and we don't because we were part of Woburn until after that era uh, so okay. in the end what we have is two things or at least two things one is, if you say to somebody, Burlington, Mass., they say one thing every single time. Do you live near the mall? You live near the mall. And I don't think being known for the mall is a great way for a town to be known because no. um, it's just one little piece of our town. That's true. And I, don't, I didn't think it was a good identity for the town. The other thing is that if you drive through the center of town, what we have is this beautiful green space. It we is have lovely. the common on the other side. We have Simon's Park, and there's a little forest. And 
But here's the problem, as I saw it, and I think people agree with me. You could drive down 3A, Cambridge Street, and, you go, and particularly from November, December, January, February, March, and April, the grass is sort of semi-dead. It isn't really yeah. beautiful. You drive by and you go, yeah, whatever, it's empty. Whatever. If you even notice it. If you even notice it. And so the question is, we don't have a recognizable identity as a town because of history, and there's pretty much no way to bring it back. It True. would be very, very difficult to reestablish a town center. What we have is the little commercial district, which has many little stores that I love, mm. like True North, yep. uh, oh, yeah. like the barber where I get my hair cut, mm -hmm. and the ice cream place, and even my bank is down there. And I have a friend who just loves the exercise place. And I got my shoes fixed down there, too. <laughs> so we have that, but nobody would claim that it's a beautiful... Let me put it another way. It's a way. strip mall. Somebody moved to town, and they said on the Burlington Residence Facebook page, just moved here from Texas. I want to show people back home where I moved to. Where can I buy a postcard of Burlington? And there was this... You can't. Everybody was <laughs> stifling their laughter because there's no such thing. You can't. So, in steering committee... Uh, periodically, I would bring in ideas. Why don't we do this? And people would go, well, there's John again with his <laughs> wacky ideas. And another time, I'd say, well, we could do this. Mm -hmm, there goes John again. <laughs> and at one point, I had visited, um, I have, let's just say, I have a relative who's got some money. Okay. And on his land, he had built a private sculpture park, Ooh. probably more extensive than even decor of a sculpture park. Wow. And I had visited him, and I came back, and I looked around, and I said, hmm, now decor of has a lovely sculpture park, but it's $20 to park. <laughs> okay? Yeah. I said, not going to happen. I said, now, imagine if this, some of this rolling land, not all of it, but some of this land around town center became a sculpture park. Wouldn't that make us, we could change our reputation from the mall town to the cool town with the sculptures. There you go. And what I said People was... People would come and vacation here just to take a picture with the sculptures. Well, that's one of the questions. How big should this get? And the answer yeah. is it gets as big as we want it to be. Three, ten, twenty... But you always hear stories about people going and, you know, visiting a statue of the giant thumb. Or oh, the absolutely. Giant, you know. So, um, at that point... Four members of the Master Plan Steering Committee came to me separately and said, that's a good idea. God, John, you you're finally, not crazy. <laughs> you're not totally crazy. And so we had a few meetings with those four folks. Okay. Um, and it was clear that the project created some interest. So we started Ooh. to try to push it a little further. But the question was, feelers how is this really going to happen? Yeah. Like what? We went before the selectmen, and they said, good idea. I don't know how it's going to happen. Go do it. And it was like, okay, <laughs> how, do, how do we oh, do yeah, it? Oh, yeah, thanks. Um, well, to skip over a lot of in-between stages, uh, one of the f where's where we are now? Yeah. Since we've spoken, there is an official subcommittee of the planning board. Oh, cool. The planning board is an official body, governmental body okay. in this town, and they can form subcommittees. And they formed a subcommittee uh, uh, that has one planning board member. It has a town meeting member who's me. Mm -hmm. It has somebody from REC who's currently uh, Kevin Sheehan. It has um, George Ratkovich, the head of art at the high school. Ooh, Michael okay. Wick, the head of the library. I may forget somebody. Um, our planning board member is Barbara LaRue. Okay. So, uh, and then our selectman is Nick Priest. So we have high school selectman, planning, library, uh, recreation, and from the business community, we have Bob Buckley. Oh, now, that's okay. important yes. uh, because Bob Buckley has a tremendous interest in art. He's an art collector. Hmm. And he also has very close relationships with a lot of the businesses in town. Excellent. And so he probably will turn out to be our significant fundraiser. 
So we have a committee and we've been meeting and trying to figure out, we made a partnership with the New England Sculptors Association. Okay, now what's that? Who well, are they? They are a nonprofit group of sculptors who band together for mutual benefit and support. Okay. Uh, so they're the, the artists themselves. Yes, it's it's for okay. sculptors all throughout New England. And um, we had started working with their previous president, and then his term was actually up this fall f after five years. Okay. And now Dr. Elise Adams is now the president, and mm -hmm. she is now an official advisor to our Your sculpture committee, committee and comes to the meetings. Oh, okay. So here's what we have cooked up. Okay. We are going to NISA, the sculptures or, or organization, okay. is going to put a call for entries on a national website that reaches really? out to sculptors. And we're going to do that like any day now. Wow. Okay. Any day now. Um, now, what is involved in those sculptors creating a proposal? They, it's they an online system. Okay. I think it's called... Um, I should remember it off the top of my head. I think it's online, onlinejuries.com, but it's okay. not. Um, if you go to the Art for Burlington site, we can redirect you over to the okay. site when it's live if you're, if you're interested. Um, and so what will happen is you as a sculptor would go, you would log in and become a member of their site if you're not already. Okay. And then you can click and see what are the calls for entry. Now, there's all kinds of things. There's probably 10 or 20 calls mm -hmm. for entry nationally at any one time. Okay. And people may be looking for little pieces or whatever. We're looking for big pieces. Big pieces. Yeah, you can't really see this if you're, you know, Right. So we spent a lot of time. In January. Yes, in January, covered with snow. Um, I wonder if the ducklings have ever disappeared under the snow. Oh, I'm sure they have. Hmm. Although they, there's a nice tree cover, so... Yeah, and I bet the parks people dig them out. Yeah. Anyway. Um, We're not going to have ducks. Well... Maybe geese, It's but. an interesting question because we had a lot of discussion about figuring out what the call for entry should specify. Yeah. And... Um, nothing political, nothing, nothing controversial. Nothing political, nothing dangerous. Um, family friendly. Very family friendly. Uh, my statement is that it should delight people of all ages. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to have the sculptors would be brought in for two years. Is that like a normal? Yeah, state? it's fairly common. One okay. of our models in doing this was Skokie, Illinois, which has a public sculpture park. Oh. And okay. um, that's what they do. They bring the sculptor in for two years because to, to uh, I would say pay a stipend for two years is way, way, way cheaper than buying it. However, what we've done is we've said part of our call for entries is we want a price from the sculptor if we decide to purchase it. Oh. If it's clear that the town loves the sculpture, yeah. then we can either through the citizens and or the business community raise the money to buy them. Okay. I have no idea what kind of dollars we're talking about. Right. I don't know. But I will tell you this. Um, Hopefully not $100,000 right off the top. I think we're talking about the kind of sculptors who are not nationally known, but who are in love with sculpture and they do it in their backyard and basement. They may weld, they may build, they may chisel from stone. They, there's even resin plastics that they use. Mm. There's all kinds of ways to make sculpture. Now, obviously, the fact that it's outdoor means it has to be sturdy, right? Uh, weatherproof. Now, outdoors in New England. In New England, <laughs> yes, right. Um, so what we're going to do uh, is um, well I should back up a little bit okay so we looked at all the parts of town that okay. the center of town we looked at Simon's Park which has a lovely hillside right. facing 3a it also has so right next to the the Disc golf. Yeah, uh, right. The, okay. It's sort of between the trees and the road almost right. uh, where it wouldn't bother the disc golf guys. Okay. Yeah, because that probably wouldn't go over yeah. too well with Although with there's the not thousands of people <laughs> playing disc golf. But, no. But, but it could be yeah. done without interfering with them. Okay. We also, uh, so if we looked at a lot of possibilities. If you think about it, there's a lot of creative possibilities putting things uh, on that hillside or along the road 
there's actually about anywhere from 10 to 20 to 30 feet between 3A and the forest as you go up that long hill. Oh, okay. Now, one of the thoughts was, well, if we put the works along 3A, then mm -hmm. as this massive number of cars comes and goes every day, they will see the sculptures. Okay. So we thought, well, all right, that's interesting. So one option was along 3A, whether it would be by the forest or... or on the common? Or, or well, we'll get no. to that in oh, a minute. Okay. Or the, the lawn area, because really okay. the most underutilized part of Simon's Park is the lawn area facing down to 3A. You can't play But it ball. turns into parking when you're having a baseball game. Well, not this part, not the part right by the stone wall. Oh, like when you're going up okay. 3A, there's just, and you get past the forest, there's just a whole bunch of grass there, and it's tilted. Oh, okay. You, the only thing you can really do there is play Frisbee golf, because you can't. Right? Okay. All right. So, All right. So we liked that. And then, you know, the new, the new uh, construction situation that's going to re replace in Building 19, mm -hmm. that's going to be a restaurant, and, and, have, and there's going to be a good crosswalk, yeah. and then having sculptures across the street. So you're sitting there having your little meal and looking at sculptures. That could happen sometime in the future. Mm. So that okay. was one thing. Because you have big knew, picture windows on those buildings. So, yeah. You know. We knew from talking to the uh, selectmen the first time that they were quite concerned about not gumming up the common because it's used for celebrate Burlington Day, it's used for Truck Day, and it's used for other things. Oh yeah. So um, we thought, okay, let's either leave the common totally empty or just put something on the corners where you can't do anything anyway. Okay. And that's like a possibility. Okay. okay? And then this committee was walking around town. We All walked right. to Simon's Park, we walked around the common, and then we found a little piece of lawn between the police station. I was wondering about that. Between the police station and Grandview Farm, surrounded by a semicircle of trees, with one over by the side, there's one old antique rake, which is very yeah. nice. Everybody said, well, now here's a place where you could put sculptures. It feels protected. Mm -hmm. You're right next to the police, so it is protected. Children can play without getting hit by cars. One of the That's concerns. That's such a key element. Yes. One of the concerns about putting things on Simon's Park was it's close to 3A. And okay. That's a very busy road. Little Center Street is not that busy. Not That's that true. busy at all. And it also, we put the sculptors, sculptures deep in that field. Okay. Kids wouldn't be near the road anyway. Would it still be visible that way? Yes. And that was another thing. Now, it certainly wouldn't be visible to the stream of cars going down 3A. Okay. So phase one is going to be putting three, maybe four or five sculptures in that field. In that field. Oh, okay. Um, so that's like a definite. It's pretty definite. Um, what we have to check, we want to actually uh, just occurred to me this week, you know, I really should go talk to the police department talk to Chief Kent and just make sure that he has no objections to having little yeah. kids playing next to the police department. I don't see why he would, but just politeness. We're going to talk to, um, we talked to the selectmen about that location, mm -hmm. but we also want to talk to the Historical Society, Historical Commission about, you know, is there any concern that they feel that bright, colorful sculptures might in some way uh, conflict with Grandview Farm? We don't think so, but, yeah, you know, so. we want everybody's input. Well, now, you could so probably also take that into consideration when you're choosing yes. the sculpture, you know, instead right. of getting a Pepto-Bismol pink thing, yes. you know, get something that has more earth tones. Well, as I said to the selectmen, this first group of sculptures is going to be really, really critical. Oh, absolutely. We really want things it's that either most make or people break. will be delighted by. Yeah. So we're not going to choose anything that people are going to go, what were they thinking? <laughs> Now, here's what the selectmen said. Oh, I'm sure somebody will still say, what were they thinking? Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. Uh, you're right, uh, because taste is so unpredictable. But um, the selectmen said, well, not that we think that y you and the committee are a bunch of whack jobs, but <laughs> we're but not, no. <laughs> not going to say yes until we see what you want to put there, which is, okay. which is that's fair. That's a pretty fair thing for them okay. to say. So what we're going to do is run the contest, run okay. the online call. It's going to close January 17th, I believe. Okay. We'll pick our winners, and then we'll call two back to the selectmen and say, here's the ones we want, and here's a Photoshop mock-up of what they're going to look like oh. in that field. 
Because okay. by then we'll figure out where we want to put them. Okay. You're going to have like a runner up just in case the selection yeah. nicks something. Yeah. Okay. We'll probably pick maybe. You'll pick like seven. We'll and pick like seven. And have them pick like four or five like or something. Okay. And uh, it's going to be very exciting to see what we get. Yeah. Uh, we made a decision that's something on the order of 12 feet tall, but that's not going to be an absolute because we figured if somebody had a very tall sort of flagpole sculpture that we yeah. loved that was 20 feet tall, but it, it didn't dominate the space, that would be acceptable. So the call for entry says 12 feet is a general goal, but we would look at exceptions as well. Based on the rest so of if the somebody design. has something just wonderful that's 16 or yeah. 20 feet, now it was 20 feet wide and 20 feet tall, that we almost yeah. certainly say it's too large. But if yeah. it happened to be 20 feet tall, or in fact, if it was only three feet tall. Now, here's the thing. We would not want to have a group of sculptures that were all teeny low to the ground. You couldn't see. Well, you need the diversity. Just right, but if we were talking about the ducklings on the Boston Public Garden, they're only two and a half feet tall, the tallest. Right. And they're very beloved. So we could have one sculpture that but was low to the ground yeah. that children could play on, perhaps if we get such a sculpture. Okay. In other words, and you're and not you know, ruling anything out. What we said is, early on the question came up, should we have a theme? And the oh, thought was, let's not have a theme. And the reason is, because if you have a theme, it has to be, well, somebody talked about the fact that there was a piggery in, 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 oh, and at one yep. time, but pigs have a theme. Well, how many sculptors want to do pigs? Or if, even if we said geometry was a theme, it has to be round yeah. balls and squares. Well, how many sculptors? So yeah. we said, let's not have any theme at all except that it should be delightful it can be colorful it could even be interactive in some way mm, that'd be cool now what we've determined we revisited just just yesterday come <laughs> to think of it it <laughs> seems like a week ago the committee met yesterday again okay and uh, four of us walked over to that field we call okay. it a field it's really kind of a lawn but it's a wonderful little spot that is absolutely... There's kind of a slope to it. A little bit of slope. And it's never, ever used for anything. And we feel putting sculptors there would not be destroying the open space quality, but enhancing it. That's true. Our whole feeling about putting sculpture in town center is, is just putting you know, frosting on the cake or a ribbon right. on the present. It's just taking something and just giving it jewelry to make it exactly. even better. Exactly. You want to enhance the value. You don't want it to be the eyesore. Right. And I think, as I mentioned to the selectmen, everybody knows that I fought pretty hard to preserve what open space we have in this town. And I should point out, by the way, uh, that I have gone head-to-head -head with Bob Buckley on, on a number of issues about open space. Mm -hmm. And we've disagreed and really fought tooth and nail. But now you're working together. And we're on the same committee. And he is essential to our committee uh, because he has so many important connections Keeping in town. Keeping it real. There so you go. Uh, it's a really good example of where you can be an adversary of somebody on a specific issue, mm -hmm. but you don't want to, there's no reason to be their enemy. On this issue, we disagree. Okay. And on this issue, we're partners. So it's really working very, very well. There you go. Cool. Um, so anyway, um, we are going to put out the call any day now. And from what we hear, most sculptors, being who they are, are going to uh, submit their things on the last couple of days. <laughs> so we're going to have nothing, 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 nothing. And then they're all going to yeah. arrive the night before. And we're going to be... think about it for a while. We're um, going to be sweating you know. bullets. If we give a party and nobody shows up. Well, that would be a little disappointing. It yeah. would be disappointing, but... It is the middle of January in New England, though, so, you know, hey. Well, it's a national call. Now, That's we do true. require part of their stipend is that they have to bring it. Okay. They have to bring it and uh, deliver it, which pre means they got to rent a truck and so forth. And then uh, we think that our DPW will help them put it Assemble. on the ground. Okay. Um, now, last time yes. when you came, we were talking about, like, cement platforms. Is that still We're going still to see if we can not required? have cement platforms because, let's it's say you put down... Permanent. Yeah, you put down a specific platform for a specific work, and then it's gone in two years. Well, that doesn't make yeah. any sense. So I think, in fact, now that you mentioned that, if it's okay with you, 
it's really a good thing to have these discussions because it brings up ideas. <laughs> Going to take some notes. Let me okay. go consider uh, putting, changing the uh, call for entries PDF where all of the rules and guidelines are being put forth. Okay. And point out that we really want the work to sit on the ground. Oh. That's a really, I'm glad you brought okay. that up because we had sort of skipped that and I'll go <laughs> ahead and. Uh, well, because that, you know, could be. An, yeah, well, because, it could be a problem. You know, I don't mean to, to jump around or not, but I also remember in, in prepping for this, last time we had talked about lifetime right. fitness and they, you know, they did give us a grant that I want to find out, or you a grant that I want to find out more about. Right. But you had also said that when they did all the landscaping, they had put like a platform down. Yes, that's a different case. Now, Nordblum, the developer okay. of Lifetime Fitness, uh, and that whole Wegmans and yeah. so forth, that in many ways has the whole, become that the, end of Middlesex the, the town center okay. that we never had, but okay. it's not historical. And I don't think... Much as I go there and I shop there and I like it for a lot of reasons. It doesn't really feel central. Yeah, I don't, it's not, it's not physically central. It's as much of a shopping center for Bedford and Lexington as, as it is for us. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know the stats on how many Burlingtonians actually shop at Market Basket or Shaw's versus Wegmans. But anyway, uh, so they want a sculpture there. And it's part of their agreement with planning that they'll put a sculpture there. And they have a concrete pad for it. Now, okay. one of the jobs of the sculpture committee was to help them choose a sculpture. Okay. They had come up with a $10,000 budget. But here's what they've done. They said, you know what? We want to put sculptures all through our area. Really? Yes. Okay. But since most of that land is private, we don't really need to work through the town on that we're just going to okay. do it why don't you guys go ahead and keep the 10 grand and use that as seed money for your own oh, municipal sweet. sculpture park an extremely generous thing for them to do yeah. so they're going to go ahead and put the sculpture outside lifetime fitness and some more sculptures okay. now okay? are they going to kind of piggyback on your request the online request and see what kind of sculpture. No, I don't think so. I think they'll, okay. they'll pursue their own uh, because okay. they won't be looking for two year. They'll be looking for oh, permanent. Okay. So they'll use a whole different process. Okay. Um, and there's lots of people. In the, and, and that's something that, you know, looping back towards high school. One of the things that we think is going to be interesting is that the high school and even maybe the middle and grade schools to some extent will be involved in this whole process. And your process the sculpture okay. park process and while we're not clearly not every kid can have a career as a sculpture sculptor but on the other hand to be exposed to people who are doing it as either a profession or even as a very very serious money-making hobby mm -hmm. I think will be very educational for the for the students oh, absolutely. and one of the things that we may very well do through our connection we actually have been meeting at the high school uh, they've been making giving us use of conference room is that we may have the students come in and look at these uh, works that people are applying and give us their opinion hmm. they can't vote the committee is going to vote yeah. this set of people is going to vote but there's no reason not to involve the high school kids to say what they like and don't like it will help I think light a fire in terms of thinking of sculpture as a real thing okay. as something you can do and so forth well it's also a broader audience so yes you know depending on you know there's only seven people on the committee right well if you get another half a dozen or even a dozen or even a hundred right school kids yeah we, we would love yeah. to hear more making it too public uh, could become cumbersome yeah. and so forth and don't forget it's only two years per so on the very odd possibility that we approve something that people don't like and that the selectmen, you know, second mm -hmm. our opinion and approve something that turns out people don't like, doesn't seem likely that that would happen. Right. The only thing that might happen is when we actually see the work, maybe it doesn't <laughs> on work paper. as well as it did. Maybe it's too shiny or not okay. shiny or too bright or not bright enough. Then we might see it and say, oh, well, we don't love it that much, but it's, that's two years yeah. and it's gone unless we love it and then we raise the money to, to right now in terms of how much sculptures cost I want to point out that um, 
This same group, New England Sculpture Association, this last summer had a big show at the um, Crane Estate. Oh, overlooking okay. Crane's Beach. Yep. And they had a they had I don't know 50 roughly 50 sculptures sculptures there pretty all outdoor. Okay. Stone, metal, or whatever. And they were all for sale. Hmm. And they had price tags on them. Wow. So it was actually sort of an outdoor gallery. And there were works there for $1500, 5000, and I think there was one big steel one that was $15,000. Wow. So what that indicated to us was that well, you know, it is possible to buy works of sculpture mm -hmm. for not one hundred and fifty thousand, not fifty thousand, but for fifteen or twenty thousand dollars. So over Just time, less than a car. yes, right, <laughs> less than a new car, right. So over time, we may we have the option of building a collection of work that people just really, really love. It's possible. Now, if that happened. Mm. Or when that happens, yes. Would you still rotate it so yes. people don't get bored? Well, I think what would happen is Just, this: you, know, um, you don't want the novelty wearing off. If you look at the MFA, they had a big uh, uh, Jill Hooley, uh, the glass yeah, sculptor the glass guy, guy, and the whole basement was full of his work. But then they had one tree, about a fifty-foot tall glass tree, yeah. green glass. And they basically, I kid when I say they sort of blackmail the public, they said, if you want to keep this, you got to pay. And people came up with the money. So that okay. sculpture has become permanent. And my feeling is that we would reach out to the community and find out how people are feeling about the sculptures that are there. And if there is one that it's clear through some kind of feedback mm -hmm. that people really don't want to see it leave, see if we can raise the money and keep it. Now, okay. it could stay right there, and then the sculptures around it could change. Okay. Uh, for all we know, there could be three that people just love, and they're only $3,000 each, right. and maybe we could buy them. I don't know. Um, so, but let me, let, me, let me branch out from there. Now, in presenting to the selectmen who control that space, they control okay. the comet and that space over there. Okay. Uh, we said, well, you know... It isn't clear how big this park should be. In the end, it might just be that little piece of land between mm -hmm. Grandview and Police. That would be it, and that would be all. The only issue with that is that you can't see it from 3A. Right. And a lot of people we would, did mention this earlier. could become one of those uh, secrets, like public secrets, okay. like well-kept secrets. Yeah. Like, did you know? No, I didn't know. So our feeling was... If this works, we'd like to find some way to expand this concept okay. so that it's visible from the main road. So then okay. very quickly over a period of six months to a year, mm -hmm. people would start saying, wow, Burlington cool. is, because nobody's going to say Burlington's the cool town with the sculptures based on our little yeah. initial. Just the they, little token plot. Right. There needs to be some greater visibility. So. This is phase one. Okay. There's no hurry about this. We do phase one. We see how it goes. Mm -hmm. And then if there's lots of enthusiasm, we go back to the, we, we form phase two. And we go back to the selectmen and say, what would you think about this? Okay. And then, like that. And then there's also the possibility of crossing the street to Simons Park, which is actually okay. controlled by the rec department. So that's a different, okay. different process. Uh, and... The extent to which it grows is really up to what a good job we do in finding works mm -hmm. and seeing how the town reacts. Cool. I now, think it's going to be great fun. A couple of questions. Yes. That I already forgot. Okay. <laughs> um, you said that the request for proposals yep. is going out real soon, right. ending about mid-January. Yep. What is the timeline anticipated to determine which sculptures are selected right. and then when those sculptures will actually show up right. on that plot of land. Our schedule right now is that the call closes January 17th okay, and that we start pondering what we've got to look at. We make a decision um, 
let's say we're going to give ourselves uh, um, six weeks or two months to decide. Okay. And don't forget, we have to after we make our decision. Then the board of selectmen. Then we go back to the board of selectmen see okay. what they say. So so it's probably going to take a couple months. That means around March, um, sometime in March, um, we will notify the winners. Okay. And then what we're hoping for and planning for is a June, twenty twenty. Unveiling. Unveiling, a big public event <gasps> Ooh. with uh, as much of a splash as we can make. Invite the public out. If we maybe we'll cover them with tarps. Yeah. Oh, you have to do that. Cover them and with then tarps. Just have it like. And then everybody stand around and maybe we'll have a band. I don't know. And we'll pull the tarp off of one. The sculptors can be there. Oh yeah. The sculptors can be doing programs over at the high school, uh, explaining how they do what they do. There's lots and lots of ways to, you know, to expand the whole project beyond four, five, six okay. things just sitting on the ground. Um, each one will probably have a plaque saying uh, where the funding came from. Okay. Um, and we'll have this big public rollout, a big party, really. Well, yeah. And then in two Especially years. Especially if some of them are interactive. Right. And then in two years, let's say we replace three of them, keep two of them, okay. replace three, but whatever. Don't know exactly. Okay. Now, would you stagger that? So, like, one's in two years and two know. years, two months? Uh, because it would look kind of weird if all of a sudden you had, you know, let's say five sculptures and four of them disappeared. It would look kind of empty, and how long would that be empty for? That's a very good question, and, and we're new to this game. I would suggest <laughs> that probably we wouldn't want it to be empty for more than a week. We would say the pickup date is here, and we're going to slot the new ones in the, the following week. Okay. Something like that. I just wasn't um, sure how long it took. You know, if you had to move it from Nebraska or something, and yeah. how do you have to assemble it? And well, yes, and these are things that we, we honestly don't know, but we do know that other cities and towns have done this. Okay. So you probably have to see how, how the first phase rolls out. Right. How easy okay. is it for somebody to drive up here from Connecticut or New Jersey or who knows how yeah. far away? with a truck and a sculpture and then presumably we're guessing that our dpw would help take it off there and put it on the ground with a little front end loader or mm -hmm. a little crane and if we can specify that they kind of have to sit on the ground um, that might mean that somebody might have to weld it to a base okay so so that it you know and, and maybe doesn't if, walk away. If we want it <laughs> stabilized, then we could, you know, we could put spikes through the base into the ground to make it very hard to steal or, or turn over or like fall that. over. On, yeah. One of the great advantages of that location is it is <laughs> right by the police station, and we may try talking them into putting their surveillance camera out there. My guess is they have cameras in the front, oh. and maybe they'll st give us a camera as well. Don't know. Um, so in a couple of years, but then. The next episode is another big rollout with another big party. Are you going? Party. Are you going to the sculpture rollout? Yeah, and the sculpture unveiling. The sculpture unveiling. I can't wait to see what those crazy people did this time. <laughs> um, the other thing is that we want to use the sculpture park, whether it's just in that location or okay. it starts to grow around town. We'll see. Who knows? But to, to kind of activate the area more. The truth is. When it's not truck day, and when it's not celebrate Burlington Day, you don't see too much going on in the comedy, mm. especially in the winter. There's a few movies in the summer, <laughs> yeah. But really, well, the concerts are fun, but yeah, a little bit of dog walking, not much. So, um, give people a reason to go out and hang out on the common. Give people a reason. Give people a reason. And the other thing that we're thinking about, which we'll wait to act on until these first sculptures are there is to have some public participation days. Oh, okay. If you Google it, public participation art is a thing. You can have a whole lot of fun, like you can bring um, uh, all kinds of stuff that you can even buy at the hardware store for not much money, paint and paper mm -hmm. and cloth and mylar, and you can make one-day constructions. Ooh, Everybody okay. gets to hang out together and they build piles of stuff or they do stuff, cool. they paint stuff, and we take a big group picture and at the end it all goes away. So that kind of public participation where we build a one-day sculpture 
out of mm. removable, inexpensive materials. Right. Uh, I think there's Cardboard. a lot of fun to be had in that. And that's an area where we can certainly work with the high school okay. on that. Cool. So that's, that's another whole aspect of livening up the center of town. One of the ways of looking at this is um, that if you've been to De Cordova or any other sculpture park, what is it? It's rolling land, mm -hmm. not very steep. Right. Well, we already have that. So in a sense, we have a sculpture park. There's only one thing missing. Sculptures. Sculptures. <laughs> and it's kind of a big thing to be missing. It's a big thing to be missing, but think about it this way. If we said, oh, well, we want a more interesting town center. Let's build an art museum. $100 million, and yeah. where are we going to put it? <laughs> Not going to happen, right? Yeah, it's kind of hard. So, And you can't exactly pick it up and... Well, a sculpture yeah, yeah. park is an art museum with no staff, no utilities... We've spoken to the town that the existing insurance will cover these works of art. Oh, so we okay. don't even have to increase that. Um, it's an art museum with mm. almost all the advantages of an art museum. And none of the... No utilities, no yeah. staff, no $5 million a year budget. There's no budget. The only budget is, you know... The there's, there's actually a little maintenance of the sculptures. You know, okay. we probably... Uh, they, if one of us is near a tree, it might get some uh, moss growing on it. Go and scrub the moss off the sculpture. And but then there are the pigeons, you know. There are the <laughs> pigeons. Although I've never seen a pigeon in Burlington. They're all over my neighbor's roof. Okay. Well, there are methods. There, there are, are methods. methods. Yes. Yeah. Well, kids with uh, little slingshots. Well, I'm just thinking you bring a statue, you're going to get a pigeon. This is true. Hopefully the sculptors know that and they <laughs> would either, you know, they'll be prepared for it. Yeah. Uh, we think it's going to be fun. We think it's going to be exciting. Um, and it's going to add another layer. Burlington has, as we know, a very strong commercial base, both in terms of shopping and in terms of uh, office parks. Okay. We are in steering committee. Our um, consultant said to us that the budget of this town, 60% mm -hmm. funded by the commercial base, is the envy of almost every town around. <laughs> That's why most towns <laughs> struggle <laughs> That's to have. I moved here almost 20 years ago. <laughs> yes, most towns are really struggling in a way that we're not. But what we don't have is a very strong art presence. We have a community theater that a few years ago won the national prize for the best community theater show. Cool. You should get them in if they haven't. They're not right. strong on publicity. So right. drag them in here, get them to talk about it. They do wonderful things at the community theater. Ooh. But that's one of the few really outstanding art things okay. we have. Most of the art is inside the school. This is the only town I know of where there's no art association. Hmm. And I'd like okay. to change that. Now, I think that the sculpture park would be one way of raising awareness okay. of art in a community. Um, okay. And we'll see what happens. Is this what you meant? I'm just kind of glancing at my notes of bringing the arts to a higher profile? Yes, is, absolutely. Oh, okay. So what would this arts committee? Yes, sculpture be? committee. Sculpture. Well, no, not the sculpture committee, but this, this next level. If we had a council of arts? Yeah, an arts council, council of arts. What well, would that I, mean? I don't think there's any need for it to be uh, a, a town operated arts council. I don't see a need for that. Okay. I think that I think that citizens can and will band together to create their own Burlington Center for the Arts or Burlington okay. Arts Association, something like that. So this would be like an umbrella organization for all of the right. performing arts. Right, and they arts. might end up running these public participation Ooh. days. Okay. Uh, there's all kinds of things that can happen. What we do is we look at our neighboring towns and see what do their art associations do? Okay. How, do they, how do they get their money? How busy are they? But I think... Now, are they at their own nonprofit organization? I suspect. Okay. Haven't really looked into that, but my feeling is that... Yeah, we need sculptures first. We start we... with the sculpture <laughs> to say, hey, this is not the same Burlington it was before. It's more fun and colorful than you thought it was. Mm -hmm. Hopefully someday people will say, Burlington, that's the town with the sculptures, right? Yeah. Not the town with the mall. Well. We'll always be the town with the mall. And by the way, I went to one of the new restaurants that opened there with the big glass windows. Mm -hmm. It was great. Oh, cool. I mean, it, I, think, I think in spite of concern about traffic and this and that, I think the fact that 
the enclosed mall is now going to be much more open, yeah. lots of glass walls, and public space. And I wouldn't be surprised if they end up with some sculpture out there as well. Because cool. they want to make it, it's not the old model of a closed building where right. everything goes on the inside. It's going to be very different. Yeah. Uh, and that's, that's part of being today's <laughs> They're still going to have a parking issue. <laughs> yeah, they will have a parking issue. And they may end up having to put up a garage. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Underground parking. Well, there's never been a problem parking until this time of year. Right. You always have the option of not going between now and January to the mall if you really <laughs> don't want to. Yeah. So. Oh, hey. So anyway, uh, but, you know, in terms of our own sculpture park idea, whether it grows okay. beyond three, four, five pieces, whether it grows outside of that area to the okay. corners of the common, whether it goes to Simons Park, that well, is there's also the area in front of the, the rec center and yes. senior center. This rec center... Because uh, there's that there's the big U driveway. And right. Well, they were maybe going to need that for parking, but um, oh, if we put okay. something there, it could be very low down, so it doesn't. Mm -hmm. it's under the trees. It could be more of a... Um, in physical format, it could be a little bit more of a ducklings type of thing, which is low to the ground. Mm -hmm. You know, There's a lot of possibilities okay. for growth, but we would grow if we do a good job and if the town reacts positively and says more. Could it ever get to the point where on weekends there would be too many visitors coming to our town to see the sculptures? That would be it's nice. It's possible. But, yeah. uh, that would be good for the local restaurants and merchants. That's true. If that ever happened and it got too busy, then we could just ramp it back a little bit. That is not the biggest concern <laughs> at this point. If that's your biggest problem. If yeah. that's your biggest problem, yeah. yeah. So... Um, it's fun. It's new. We've never done it before. Uh, there's a little bit of brain surgery self-taught, but the partnership with the New England Sculpture Association is very important. Yeah. Okay, backing up a little bit. Yeah. One of my other questions was, okay, Lifetime Fitness yeah. has given the Sculpture Committee this $10,000 grant. Right. Who manages that? And if you start doing fundraising, is that mm. part of the committee? Is that part of the... I think that fundraising will be... Um, Somebody's got to be able to sign the checks. Yes. I think fundraising, we're gifted with uh, basically startup money by Nordblom. But I think that... Um, now, is that town managed or... Well, the, f the funds will go into a town account. Okay. Because the Sculpture Committee is a branch of town. the town government through the planning okay. board. Um, so those funds raised... now. Is it possible at some point we might form a 501c3 to go out and raise money? It's possible. Everybody knows that's a real pain in the neck. There are also umbrella organizations that you can raise your money using them as your umbrella so oh. that you don't spend several thousand dollars on legal fees to become a 501c3. It would be nice to not you know, deal with that. Okay. Um, current tax situation is that it's less advantageous than it used to be to donate, so... But some grants that we have looked at uh, make it clear that you've got to be a 501c3 to even okay. apply. So that could happen. Now, if you look at the library, there's the it's a town thing, but there is a Friends of. Right. The dog park is a town friends thing, of. but there's a Friends of the dog park, right. and they raised independent money. Okay. Um, if, in fact, every two years we need, let's say, we set a stipend of twenty five hundred, starting at twenty five hundred dollars. Okay. There are four twenty five hundreds in ten thousand, I think. Does that sound yeah, about right? Sounds about right. That means that if we could come up with ten thousand every two years, okay, roughly we could get four new pieces every two years. Now, ten thousand dollars every two years is not a massive fundraising amount of money. Not really. Would we ever go to the town? Maybe. I would say this. Um, if the thing is very popular, mm -hmm. I would be certainly willing in the future to go to the town, town meeting and say, hey, we spend $15,000 every year on the fireworks, which I'm in favor of. Kay. But how about a little bit less every two years as a commitment to art? And if the sculpture park is popular, I think town meeting would vote for it. But we wouldn't go anywhere near there until we've proven that it's a good thing. Right, okay. And they might say no and you anyway. you want to make sure you get the public support, you know, the community support as well. Right, right. Oh, so it's baby yeah. steps. Sounds good. We're 
fingers crossed. So are you going to enter anything into the sculptor, sculpture? Well, no. Number one, I'm not a sculptor. I did make those two 10-foot uh, styrofoam dragons. There you go. That, uh, but they are definitely not weather resistant. We set them up for a BCAT program and the wind came up and broke <laughs> one. <laughs> oh, it broke it? Yeah, it broke oh, okay. it. Okay. But we brought them to town uh, Burlington Day, celebrate Burlington Day this last time, and they were very popular. Excellent. We also had made a little uh, styrofoam kind of a Lego-y thing. Yeah. And kids were having fun taking it apart and putting it back together. Mm. So um, the dragons periodically will make, uh, they'll make an appearance on non-windy days. <laughs> ah, there you go. <laughs> They're very flimsy made out of styrofoam. No, I have ideas about what I think would be fun, but a, I, I don't think I should submit because I'm on the committee. <laughs> little and con B, conflict of interest. Little conflict. Yeah. And B, I've never built a sculpture out of anything <laughs> except styrofoam. Styrofoam. So and that, that didn't work out too well. No, that, that you know. No, um, we're excited to see what people. There's people all over the place that are just in love with making sculptures. Cool. I have a brother. He makes indoor sculptures. He would not be, you know. Um, making anything for us, but he okay. he welds in his garage and he builds little things that that spin in the wind and stuff like that because he just loves well, it. Well, if it's spinning in the wind, it's got to be an outdoor sculpture. Yeah, but it's small. Oh, okay. Because I'm like yeah, they're like not a lot of wind tall. in my living room. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm I'll, I'll I'll let him know about it, but I think it would be uh, looked on as a conflict of interest if my brother won. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I would have to recuse myself from voting on him. Yeah, but who knows? Who knows? Um, there's a lot of really wonderful things out there. Um, it's a little bit cold now to go to the De Cordova, Just but a bit. on a warm 50 degree winter day, which you know with no wind, uh, take the family over to De Cordova, and there's some wacky stuff that we probably wouldn't even want in our town. Mm -hmm. But they have the two giant 10-foot hearts by Jim Dean. Oh, they're okay. huge black hearts, and they're made out of you go up, there's hammers and saws and all kinds of tools that are cast into them. Oh, They're fascinating. Wow. And they have one of my all-time favorite sculptures by the Matisse, who was the grandson of the painter Matisse. Okay. It is a row of aluminum tubes cemented into cement. Okay. Different heights. And children and adults are encouraged to take sticks, which they have in a holder, okay. and bang on them. Because I was wondering about that, because like the Children's Museum over in Acton, um, as well as Blue Man Group, use like PVC pipe. That's right. And you like beat right. the crap out of those, and it like makes really Great cool noises. music too. Great noises. This, um, and the thing is that actually nobody lives right there. There's yeah. a few houses on the other side of the trees, but if we had something that made quiet noises, that you really... Yeah, like, like the, PVC pipe probably won't take make as much noise as the metal would. Yeah, yeah, but even then, they, but even then, if you're more than fifty feet away, you, you barely hear it. It's a, it's a kind of a attractive clunky noise. So something like that would be great fun. Excellent. Great fun. But you know what? We're out of time. We are out of time. I'm a talker, ain't I? Well, that's a good thing because I didn't really have to answer questions. But I think you're. Well, I think you did everything. I have me. to say, I. I am really excited about this. I think it's going to be good. It for the sounds town. really amazing. So we'll have to have you come in another year, and you know, or we'll have to do something live from the unveiling. You should come. I'm sure BCAT <laughs> will cover the unveiling. It's going to be right. very exciting. Well, thank you very much for coming and giving us an update. I really, you know, I'm, I am now pretty excited about it too. Great, good. So, and I want to thank everyone at home for tuning in this evening. I hope you found our conversation as exciting and anticipation as as I just mentioned. So thank you very much for tuning in. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving and I'll see you around town. Good night.